Jerry Hatfield. And I'm Travis Cook. And this is Tablet Tips. Not so tablet edition. <sighs> True. We're talking about websites in this edition. And not just websites, web applications. It's a brand new... You can use them on your tablet. Or your laptop or desktop or, heck, even I, iPhone. But yeah. I now, our goal here is not so much to educate you about tablets this time, but to let you know what your average college student is using as far as on the web. And you're using us as a metric for average. Sorry. <laughs> <sighs> you sure for him to say that part of the video. So let's start out simple. Hopefully you've heard about Gmail. Google. I've heard about Gmail. Actually, I'm pretty new to Gmail, relatively speaking. I've only been using it for less than a year. Now, a lot of you are probably using your ISP, your internet service provider's email solution. Yahoo, Hotmail. Anything. We highly recommend switching to Gmail. This is because I was a Hotmail user. He was a Yahoo I, user. I was a Yahoo user until a year ago. And year. we both have switched to Gmail and we love it. There's so many different features integrated into the entire Google Applications solution that if you don't have a Gmail, you're going to be left behind. Just a lot it. of college students use Gmail. You can actually forward, we're not going to explain it here, you can forward your school email to Gmail, and you can send email so it appears that it's coming from your school email. We'll probably have a tutorial or a tablet to about that in the future. Right. But we're not going to cover that here. Eh, for the basic part of it, Gmail's cool. Now, we mentioned Google Applications. Um, the next thing we want to mention is Google Documents. Now, it's not just documents. I mean, there are documents such as Microsoft Word, Word. type files, spreadsheets, which are similar to Excel. A poor version of Excel. And the Presidenter, which is a poor version of Excel. The there you go. Yeah, there you before. go. Now, for a little uh, description of how this is useful, my freshman year in English, I had to do a group paper, and we were emailing back and forth the versions, and that was awful. We lost whole paragraphs and the revisions were off. Somebody would revise an old version and somebody would revise a new version. It was terrible. This solves that problem. Because your paper is in the cloud, so to speak. It's on the internet. You can all three be editing the same files at one time. At the same time. Not only is there only one version, you can edit simultaneously with the chat window inside. Yep, it's very useful. Now you, so people can say you can do this with other applications. It's just much simpler with my, with uh, Google Documents. We oh, yeah. recommend. It's, it's free. Really simple. It's also free. Now, it's probably not going to compete with um, productivity software like Microsoft Office as, as far as one person using it. I mean... this The main reason to use this here is when you have a group using it and you need one version of the file and you need to keep it in sync. Or you have a set of information that you need to share with a group. For instance, Peace School Student Council, I share a lot of our information using a Google document. So instead of emailing stuff out, I just put it on Google Documents, send everybody a link. It's so much easier to find these videos. And the information is updated in one place. Very nice. Now, Moving on. Only one more Google type application we're going to mention today. There's a lot of Google stuff. Time. Just check out Google. You'll become ingrained in it if you're any bit nerdy. But Google Reader. Now, Google Reader is a, basically an RSS reader and for the two cent for sure, what's RSS? Well, it's like subscribing. Basically, you get little bits of a website mm -hmm. or a podcast. I think there's a pretty good podcast I've heard of, maybe Tablet Tips. Really? In your heard so. The right. new episodes appear right in the reader, and you can watch them right there. It's kind of like having a new subscription on your computer. It's actually the same idea. It's shameful how many things I have in my Google Reader. What well, Google Reader does is it takes all these RSS feeds, which are different subscriptions, and puts them in one pane. So... You just go through reading your favorite feeds. Now, there are feeds everything from Tablet Tips to the Wall Street Journal to the Gizmodo to... XKCD, one of my favorites. Hang on, which one? I don't know which one I'm going to show you yet, but I'm going to cover one right here. Yeah, XKCD. It's funny. It's a wonderful geeky, it's geek funny. comic. Hey, props to you, XKCD guys. We love you. And I'm anyway. allowed to put it up here because it's Creative Commons. Anyway, there we go. back to useful software. Remember the milk. It's something that I've started using heavily, and I love it. I haven't brought myself to use it. It's basically just a reminder service. It's a to-do list. That's right. its entire premise. It's a to-do list that is online. You can add to from any service. I can add to my cell phone by leaving a voicemail. He can add to my to-do list. It's great for, for group projects even. It's just that part does take a little getting used to. If you're a list-oriented person, heavily recommend checking out my Google Nice web service. Again, how much does it cost? Free! There's lots of free stuff out there. Now, uh-oh, we're here. Social networking. 
There's there's this I'm one social it. network that I think 115 percent of all college students are on. Facebook. Really? That's what it is? I was thinking it was my. Oh uh, yeah, that is. If you're on MySpace, transfer now because we'll never check your page. You'll <laughs> hate MySpace. Sorry. But yeah, most people in college are using Facebook. It's just what we do. It's been around for a while, and since you're coming from high school, you probably at least have had exposure. It used to be college exclusive. Now it's a little more. I hate present. Facebook. I don't use it, but I have one. Uh, yeah. That average college student is using it. I have a Facebook profile. It's a nice place to centralize your data. You have real versions of your friends. They exist. Just don't friend everybody. Now, this is not really a social network, so to speak, but it's something we both use, and it's becoming quite the community. Twitter. Yes, apparently if you're going to be a podcast <laughs> these days, you have to mention Twitter. It's still very much in a geeky niche, but niche niche. But Twitter is, here's the idea. What are you doing right now? What am I doing? I can update my Twitter right here. I'm it's, not going to, but I can. You update 140 characters at a time. It's about the size of a text message. Your actually. Facebook status or MySpace status message on steroids. In fact, my Twitter is my Facebook status. Yes, I actually realized today it looks like I'm on Facebook at work because I'll update my Twitter from my phone and then it goes to Facebook. So it looks like I'm on Facebook while I'm at work. But if you're interested in that sort of thing, and we think you should please try it out, check out Twitter, twitter.com. And if you want to follow us, your favorite Tablet Tips hosts. Oh, we're not going to say, oh, okay, we are. Twitter.com slash JJ Hat One. I'm Travis Seacook. There's a C in the middle. And they should be at the bottom. Shameless plug, we're sorry. But before you do that, go to speedstud.com. Go to speedstud.com. Go to speedstud.com and view all our good videos. You might want to subscribe to us using Google Reader. Mm-hmm. If you look on your left-hand side sidebar, you'll see uh, different ways to subscribe. And yeah. Look. If you have any questions, you want a tablet tip mailed, email us. What's your email, Jared? Stug at speedstug.com. That's right, Jared. As always, thanks for watching. See you next time.